So we will continue our lesson on adjustments. Uh, yesterday, or the last lesson, we talked about a lot about a few different types of adjustments and adjusting entries, the process, the purpose. So we will start with this slide where it highlights uh, a few uh, the five different types of adjusting entries that we're going to discuss that we are discussing in this course: supplies, prepaid expenses, unearned revenue, late arriving invoices, and amortization. So moving on to the next slide, uh, we talked a bit about uh, why would you have these adjusting entries to begin with, uh, and it's very clear that you need these adjusting entries at the end of the fiscal period to make sure that the accounts are properly reflecting the, uh, the amounts in those uh, accounts. So the first adjusting entry that we talked about was in regards to supplies. So during the year, uh, you know, you purchase supplies and you use them. At the end of the year, let's say that you count the amount of supplies that you have left and let's say that you have $3,000 worth of supplies that are left, which means that in this example, you have now used up $7,000 worth of supplies. So you have to record it because you have not recorded the usage of the supplies so far. What you have recorded in the accounting books is the purchase of the supplies. So original entries have been debit supplies, credit cash. And now that you have to record the usage of the supplies, you would debit supplies expense and credit supplies. When you credit supplies, which is an asset account, it decreases. So it reflects the actual amount of assets as actual amount of supplies that are left over in the, at the end of the year. Moving on to the next type, we have prepaid expenses. So as alluded to earlier, uh, prepaid expenses are assets. These are, uh, uh, are those types of expenses that uh, will become expenses in the future or as you use them up. So for several types, for example, rent and insurance, the vendor, the company that is renting you or giving you the insurance policy would like their rent or premiums, insurance premiums, right away at the beginning. They do not like to uh, give, uh, put themselves in a risk, uh, so they'd like everything up front. And this happens quite often with businesses. So when this happens, when you have paid the rent or the insurance, it has actually become your asset because at any time you can ask for the cash back from the vendor. So this, the original entry would be debit prepaid rent or debit prepaid insurance, whatever case uh, we're looking at, and credit cash. So this is your original entry. As you use this up, so at the end of the month, at the end of the quarter, at the end of the year, you have used up either a month, three months, or the year's worth of insurance or rent. So as you use this up, you are now decreasing the prepaid asset and increasing the expense. So debit rent expense or debit insurance expense and credit prepaid rent or credit prepaid insurance. So this way, this entry would be the adjusting journal entry. So and remember, adjusting general entries try to reflect the true picture of your assets or expenses or liabilities uh, and equities. So uh, just briefly, you will notice a trend here that because prepaid assets, uh, prepaid expenses are assets, they move to expenses at the end of the fiscal period. So the adjusting entry helps the asset move to an expense. Okay? Now notice what happens to the next journal entry. In the next case, we have unearned revenues. Unearned revenues are those uh, amounts of cash that have been received in advance. So they will become revenues. They have not so far at this point become revenues. So this happens quite often in service businesses such as law offices, accounting offices, architect offices, uh, and it happens quite a lot in construction business where they look for a deposit up front. So when you are giving a deposit, you are basically uh, in a prepaid expense kind of situation. When you are receiving this deposit, this unearned revenue, you are in the unearned revenue situation. So debit cash because you received the cash and credit the unearned revenue, which is a liability account. Unearned revenue is a liability account. So this is your original entry. This is what you do when someone pays you the cash. When you actually earn it, 
when you actually earn the revenue as time goes by, when you earn it, you take it out of the unearned revenue account and you put it in the revenue account. So how do you take it out of the unearned revenue account? You debit unearned revenue and you credit revenue. This is your adjusting journal entry when you take it out of unearned revenue. So an example might be you go to a lawyer and you retain a, law, a lawyer. When you do that, they're looking for a deposit. Let's say that deposit is $1,000 and then at, you know after three months, the work is now finally complete. So the first time when you gave him the $1,000, gave her the $1,000, that is the lawyer's unearned revenue. That goes into their unearned revenue account and then after three months when your work is completed, they take it from unearned revenue and put it in their revenue account. So that's how these things are, are uh, managed. Now notice, as I said in, a few minutes ago, prepaid expenses were an asset account. They moved from assets to expenses. Unearned revenue is a liability account. So this moves from liability to revenue. So expenses are coming from assets and, li uh, and, and revenues are coming from liabilities. So notice this trend in adjusting entries as we uh, progress through. Uh, then we have a, a, a small slide here that explains this fact that your unearned, uh, 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 sorry, your assets move to expenses and that your liabilities move to revenues. Another type of adjusting entry that's required uh, is, is accrued expenses, which means that these are expenses that have been incurred but not yet paid for. So for example, you have used up the electricity, but you haven't received the bill for electricity yet. So as you receive the bill, it might be the next year, meaning next fiscal year for the business or next fiscal month for the business. But you have used the electricity in the past. So you have to go back, uh, uh, meaning go back in the sense that uh, use the, date, the proper dates to adjust the accounts. So you have to expense that account right away um, even though you may not have received the bill. Or if you receive the bill later, then you change the date to go back in your books to reflect the actual date of usage. You cannot use previous year's bill and this year's bill. That's what it's trying to tell you. If it means, if it reflects last year's bill, you have to use it in last year's accounting records. So the, there is no original entry for this. There's only an adjusting entry. You're expecting a bill to come so you would report, record that as an expense and you credit that as accounts payable because once you receive the bill, then you pay for it. Amortization. Amortization is the last type of adjusting entry that we're going to discuss. It is quite um, uh, complicated in the sense that first you have to understand what amortization is. Amortization basically tries to take an asset, a fixed asset, a long-term asset, an asset that your business has purchased for a few years, and then it tries to establish the useful life of that asset. So let's say that you bought a piece of furniture, and you have to, when you buy it, you have to record it as an asset, of course, debit asset, debit furniture, credit cash, but then you have to come up with its useful life. You have to understand, you have to somehow guesstimate uh, what and how long this will last. Of course, based on some kind of evidence, based on the structure, based on the person who sold you the furniture, how long it will last, based on your previous experience, there is some kind of uh, a proper procedure for you. And, and then let's say you estimate that this piece of furniture will last you 10 years. So because you have purchased this furniture in year one, but it will last you 10 years, you have to use the worth of the furniture and take it and amortize it over the next 10 years. Amortization is a type of an expense. It is not anything else other than a type of expense. It does not touch your cash account because you have paid for the furniture on day one, right? So that means you've debited the furniture, credit cash, it's gone. But now you are using the same asset and you have, you're uh, amortizing it over its useful life based on your best estimate. So that's what amortization is. And amortization requires you to understand that it is not going to reflect your cash account for the next 10 years. So then what happens? What happens is that you debit amortization expense okay, 
and you use the asset particularly. So debit amortization expense for furniture as an example and you credit accumulated amortization. What is accumulated amortization? Accumulated amortization is a new account that you're getting used to now which is a contra asset account. It is a contra asset account. What does that mean? It means that usually an asset account has a debit balance. Usually an asset account has a debit balance. A contra asset account has a credit balance. It is not a liability. It is not a revenue. Because it is not a liability, it is not a revenue, it is a contra asset account with a credit balance. It reduces the value of your asset. So it is a book, an accounting book, accounting records kind of an accounting entry. It is, it is not related to cash. So I will stop this here. I, will, uh, I want you to focus on the things that we have talked about today, in particular all these adjusting entries. Um, I'm introducing you to, uh, to all of them day by day uh, in a lesson, uh, you know, uh, a lesson by lesson. So these, th th this chapter as I had started out uh, yesterday with the lesson, that this is a complicated chapter. It requires a lot of focus, a lot of uh, exercises for you to do, a lot of pre preparation work, and then you will understand all these adjusting entries concepts. And once you do, you'll master them quite quickly. quickly. So I'll stop here and I'll continue this lesson uh, uh, tomorrow. As always, ARTW, Accounting Rules the World.